into the show, ladies and gentlemen, the Triple Play Fantasy Baseball Show, a proud member of Fantasy Points and the Fantasy Points Media Group. The Mendy here, joined by someone that is on a mission to make him hurt first. Art Tornapini, a little piece of steel. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> good, good start, Elsie. Can you even hear me? He's on uh, mute and he doesn't it, know. Oh <laughs> no! Wow! Well, I just told the funniest joke. You guys missed it. <laughs> I was cracking up. Uh, people here, they were loving it. So, um, no, I'm stoked to have so many faces here. It's to have have this great uh, have this great episode to start off start off our evening, man. I'm stoked. Yeah, we got a great cast and crew. Uh, but before I introduce the great cast and crew, there is somebody you also know on this show, the man who gives Will Smith type slaps to the face from his burner accounts. It's Eric Mendelson, aka the Doc. What's going on? My burner accounts. Come on, man. I have a life. I, I don't resort to that. You don't have any burner accounts, Doc? None. No, but you have a burner account. <laughs> yeah, I do. We'll leave it. At, uh... We'll leave it at that. <laughs> Of course, uh, we can't forget the proud papa of Coco. It's Marty Tallman, a.k.a. Marty Party. What's up? You know, it's another beautiful day as a dog dad. Um, today we um, sat around and she watched me eat and uh, work. And uh, she was quiet all day. It was beautiful. Nice. Yeah, I, that's that's the dog dad life. I yep. can't, can't say that sounds too bad. But you guys see we have a big cast and crew on screen here. And rather than sit here for 20 minutes to introduce everybody, I need you guys to know these men, we welcome in some men that are here to provide relief in all the best ways. This group of men write for fan tracks, SP streamer, nine inning, know it all fantasy and frames, Razball, fantasy pros, Metsmerized, and the athletic. Oh yeah. They're also members of tout wars, the fantasy black book and FSWA. And they're all here in this party tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome in some teachers in real life and all teachers of relief pitching game and they spit relief pitching game and they're here to educate you tonight it is greg jewett mike carter aaron pags and nate markham how's it going fellas hey, Good, hey. Think, yeah when you were listing the accolades i think the writing uh resume that's just greg just so you know <laughs> <laughs> he, he writes everywhere and we're here too we're we're here we're drinking beers we're living life we're away from uh i know doc and and Greg, you guys are teachers. We're away from, from school for the rest of the night. So sometimes it's, I mean, it, it's crazy right now in school building. So being able to kind of escape like this sometimes is pretty nice. Uh, but I got to ask, because I wanted to save this part for not, I wanted to give it its own separate thing. Three of you guys have a very cool thing out there right now. And it's called Reliever Recon. Can you tell our listeners what that's all about? Greg. <laughs> Um, basically, uh, I, I won't put the website I used to work for under the bus, but, um, I was told last year in a staff meeting that I needed to write more articles for, um, the common man. And that's not really what I'm good at. I don't want to say this in a mean way. Um, but I like doing deep dives and analytics and, and things of that nature. And, um, watering down content just for clicks doesn't really do it for me. So I decided that uh, somehow covering closers became my niche. I didn't really choose it. I think it chose me. Um, I've been doing the closer charts for years on my own. And then, um, you know, I, I had been on Aaron and Nate's show uh, that they were running last year a couple of times. And uh, I reached out to a couple other people and said, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to try and do my own thing. Do, do you want to get on board? And um, I was really nervous because at the on, on the onset, it, it started slow. But it's, you know, it's the off season. We had a bunch of uh, NFBC people join up. And, and as, as Aaron predicted, it's uh, the last month has just been a landslide. Uh, we're up to, I think, 359 subs. Um, for for just uh you know in our initial in our initial you know launch and uh you know i get very nice emails from subscribers uh, i always tell them it's a team and, and it's all of us doing the doing the work and uh it's basically we we just we specify on 
on relievers, uh, closers, setup guys. Um, Aaron has started a new series on points leagues. Um, you know, Aaron and Nate man the podcast. Eric Samolski does our video work, and he's done a couple of really cool fantasy flowchart articles. And um, we can't leave out the bullpen guru because once the season starts, if you're in like a Yahoo – uh, head-to-head league that does daily transactions he's your guy because he identifies who what he's calling the fruit the first reliever out of the pen uh, the guys that are going to come in and vulture all those wins at the early season with all these pitchers going 75 or less for a lot of these teams uh, that the piggyback guys are going to be fantasy gold the first month of the season so if you're in a format that gives you unlimited transactions i mean the, the stuff he does on a daily basis is it's it's going to be a, a league difference maker for a lot of formats. So we bake that all in. So every day I go through the closer charts. I update the the stats from the spring games, what's going on in the hierarchy um, and things of that nature. So it's a living board. So it's like, you know, I know a lot of places and in, including my column on the athletic, it's once a week. So once it goes live, it's like you hear the crickets like behind Mike right now. Um, so you can't do stuff, but the, the, the closer charts are, Every day. I mean, heck, they could be every hour. So, Mm -hmm. and if something happens and I'm asleep here, if one of the other guys is up at night and something breaks, they can go right into that chart and update it. uh, And and people can click on, I mean, I'll be on there at one in the morning and there's 10 people on there watching what's going on. It's kind of freaky, but it's also kind of cool. So I'm sorry. I probably went over on our time lot, but that's everything going on at recon. So Patreon.com slash reliever recon, right? <laughs> Patreon.com slash reliever recon. I'm not a good businessman. <laughs> that was a fantastic sales pitch. Like you, I think you sold not just the four of us, you sell everybody tuning in. And, and if, for those that do want to be able to see the actual like, sub, like link for it, there is a link in the YouTube subscription to their Patreon that you guys can go check out if you want to go check it out right now while you guys are watching. Because again, I mean, Greg outlined it beautifully, but. If you're trying, this is this could be a big difference between winning and losing your league with this type of inside edge. So, uh, the fact that you guys have such a great crew over there, and such a, a ton of great guys that are putting in the work, uh, it's going to be huge. So, I, I mean, not surprised that you guys have built it up already to where you have, and it's going to keep getting bigger, obviously. So, kudos to you guys and all the great stuff you're doing for Reliever Recon. Thank but you. Your three heads plus the head of Dr. Mike Carter. I mean, again, we talked about it. Mount Rushmore of relief pitcher gurus here. We needed you guys for our relief pitcher preview tonight. But instead of just talking relief pitchers, let's do a relief pitcher draft. Let's switch it up a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a random draft order assigned. And then we're going to go through four rounds of our relief pitcher draft. And then, of course, our question of the week and game of the week will always follow that. So it's going to be a fun episode. I don't want to waste any more time. Let's get right to our draft order. And I have our five yard or 100 yard rush on screen ready to go. So you guys are all familiar with this. You guys have seen this before. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I never I think, have, but let's I have it. not, but we'll, you know. No. Oh, this is it. the best way to determine draft order. And I wish they had a baseball version. I'm yeah. not going to shuffle. Do you guys want me to shuffle the, our starting spot at all or leave it as it is? You could let it go. All right. <laughs> Just so you guys can see, I, I did not give myself. Better luck. No, there's no odd stacking here. We're gonna uh, set this up. We're gonna go faster speed. Okay. Four seconds min, or two seconds seven should be okay. Here we go. Who gets the first pick? We're finding out right now live as you guys are watching on YouTube. If you're on the podcast version, I'm sorry. You're going to have to listen to the play-by-play. Greg's <laughs> out to a fast start. Uh, oh, but Doc, no, 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 look at Doc. No. God, Cheesecake coming up from the rear. Stuck. Cheesecake got the lead. Come on, Pegs. There, there it is. Geez. Look at that. Good. Oh, wrong. Look, at, look at this. Oh, come on. Oh, okay. yeah, he'll see number one. Okay. Marty coming in at number yeah, two. Um, Give yes. me three. Good. Oh, I, I didn't want two anyway, honestly. Oh, God. I've picked on the 15 end of every draft. This is perfect. <laughs> it's fitting for you, Pag. Yeah. Jeez, I'm at seventh. All right. So our draft order is LC one, Marty two, Nate three. I'm at four. Mike uh, is at five. Greg's at six. Doc's at seven. And Aaron Pag's at eight. Obviously, it's snake draft rules. So uh, Pag's will be able to pick two guys on the way back there. So, all right. With that being said now, we are going to go to my official draft board, which is this incredible Google Doc that I made. And <laughs> at this point, 
the quality is suffering a little bit, but that's okay. So I'm going to start out with Elsie. You have the first reliever pick on the board. Who are you taking at the 101 of relievers? And oh, I'm sorry, uh, Elsie, I do want to preface. This is normal five by five categories. So you keep that in mind. Yeah, I I I generally go Hendricks over Hader. I I love the uh, he just has a just that slightly slightly more elite whip, and uh, you know uh, he he he's going to give you over thirty plus saves, and 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 that's a team that goes to to their. I have I have uh, Hendricks. Sorry, not Hader. But oh, did you pick Hendricks? I was totally I picked Hendricks. Like... Yeah, sorry. No, I, I'm I'm going Hendricks because uh, I I like his whip a little bit better. Than hater. Wow. Okay. So me right off, right out of the gate, uh, I'm gonna go to you first, Greg. Was it a shocker to you that LC went Hendricks over Hater? I don't think it's a shocker. I mean, you can't overreact to the spring things. Now we are keeping track of Hendricks's uh, velocity. I wish he would get to a Statcast Park this spring so I could see a reading. But um, you know, he, he's had a slow start. But uh, again, I, I personally have Hater first, but it's okay. I get it especially because Hendricks is a volume guy. He, he's going to get extra innings with La Russa mm-hmm. being a dinosaur. <laughs> and Doc, and Doc, you're a White Sox fan, so you must be loving Hendricks going number one there. I thought I thought Art was going to take Rowan Wick personally. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, I, I don't think you can go wrong either way, honestly. I mean, I, I, I favor Hendricks a little more just because of what Greg said with the volume play. I think he's going to crack a few more saves than Hader does. Uh, just, just a, a hunch. No, no hard evidence on that. Okay. Well, then let's get to our second pick of the draft here, which is going to be Mr. Marty Tallman. Marty, I have a gut feeling of who you're taking here. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, specifically only listening to Greg from now on, and he said hater, so I'm going to go hater. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. That's some, that's some good advice. That Josh Hater. The I mean, these guys are the consensus top two going off the board in some way, shape, or form. So. At that point, you're taking whoever falls in your lap there. This is where we maybe hope we might get some differentiation here. But going here with the third pick is Nate. Yeah. Where are you going here? Uh, it's not real different from, from us at Recon. I think we collectively have uh, Rizel Iglesias. I'd say firmly at three. But you can bunch. And, you know, like you said, we'll talk probably about the next four names. All theoretically kind of intermingle one another. But, you know, Rizel just – insulated role i feel like the floor is as solid as even hendrix and hater and i mean you know we we know he's not going to be in any other role besides the ninth and that's about as much uh support that you could ever want out of your out of your first pick in the really in the reliever only uh draft <laughs> yeah he's gonna get a lot of saves they just signed him to an extension so you know he's got that job secured i think he's definitely the third here to me now, and I, I saw this kind of trending on Twitter today about Ryan Presley's velocity. And Greg, I actually saw you comment on it. I think Frank put it out there. And you mm-hmm. said a lot of relievers' velocity is down early yep. on when they pitch in spring training, and then it should pick up over the course of, of spring training to the regular season. At this point where I'm drafting right now, I did seeing that information. I mean, it, it's Presley and, uh, and Class A are usually I, I in consensus – Somewhere they're going in the next two here. I feel like Class A has to be the slam dunk fourth guy here. Do any of you guys disagree? The, no, the only thing that worries pick. me. Oh, sorry. I was say <laughs> the only thing that worries me about Class A is there's nobody setting them up. I mean that bridge is horrible. But he's a stud. I feel like I feel like David's cheating. He hasn't made his official selection. He's seeking input right now. This is not really. No, you read me like a book. He's seeking input on his decision. I didn't technically from lock it people. in yet. I, yeah, I think David you, should have to forfeit his pick. You should pick your pick before you ask for advice from reliever experts. You jerk. Well, let me uh, let me hear Aaron's thought on this. What are your thoughts on Class A? I, I'm actually the low guy at reliever recon on Class oh, no. A. Oh no. Yeah. Um. He, his uh. Last year, he had a, a pretty good swing strike rate. It was like 16-something or whatever, but his uh, K rate was not that high. It was only in the 20%, in the 20s somewhere. Um, and he was actually the lowest relief, actually the lowest pitcher with a with a swinging strike rate over 16%. Like, they had the lowest K rate for that. So I don't know if that's just like a quirk and the Ks are coming because he didn't have a lot of strikeouts last year on a per-inning basis. Uh, so I'm kind of a little bit um, – and, you know, the track record – 
obviously much shorter than than the other guys here that that'll be taken in the next couple picks so yeah i wish i had the first second or third pick the fourth pick <laughs> is not as fun here uh but now we're over with mr mike carter are you going chalk with presley or are you going somewhere else no i'm gonna go edwin diaz please Woo! okay uh and the reason for that for me is that i think uh, he offers that strikeout upside that you that you know you, you can get 100 strikeouts out of him and probably 30 saves. Now, there are some people who are, are calling for his demise this year and saying, you know, this could be the year that he loses the role. Um, they've they've said that before, and he's always kind of come back fairly strong. I, I think that uh, as much as there's some noise around some of the other guys that are in that bullpen, I think he's still their best bet, and he's going to continue to be their best bet. And I think for the fifth closer off the board, I feel pretty confident taking him there. When he allows a record amount of home runs this year as a closer, I'll make sure I tweet you. Please do. He, he is actually, I mean, I think it's changed recently because I'm looking at NFBC ADP over the last week, and Edwin Diaz has now become the fifth closer off the board. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's now take overtaken Presley by, I believe, let's see, Classy's going around 63, Diaz is going around 65, and then Presley's going around 67. So that's definitely some recent changes. Can you guys think of a reason why that might be? Why Presley has sunken now to the sixth guy off the board? I, I would like to think that the guys in in the NFB, you know, the main events and drag like that, don't look back at last year and mm-hmm. try to equate last year's lack of saves into any justification mm-hmm. for this year because that's no rhyme or reason for. I mean, they blow out teams. It very likely could come into the season and Presley could lead the league in saves. I don't think anybody would mm-hmm. think that that's just an absolute stretch. Peripherals were solid. It just, he had the lowest. I think we look back, Aaron, and forgive me for not having it exactly at my fingertips, but I believe it was like the second or third lowest uh, save opportunities for any team that's won over 90 games in the past 15 years. Something to that effect. Maybe that's hyperbole, but usually, you know, that's me trying to build up a. Uh, Presley, so I can trade him in this next round. Um, <laughs> well, you might have an opportunity to trade him. Is Greg, who has the next pick here? Are you gonna Greg's take our guy Ryan Presley? Wait, Greg's a what now? My best friend. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I I have to take Presley because the two guys behind me were higher than me on on him in the rankings. But it's yeah, I'm I'm not gonna freak out. And and as you were referencing. Um, Yes, the a lot of reliever uh, velocities are down this spring. I think guys are are trying not to overthrow early to avoid injury, and I think you know a lot of the you know some of the guys are just letting it go. But you know we're not all twenty six years old like Gregory Soto, so uh, the veterans know. And Presley likes to do his work on the backfields. He gets feedback from the the major league hitters, and, and he's happy with that. And he knows his routine, so it's not like he's one of these young guys trying to cement his role in any sort of a fashion. And the Astros had an abnormal amount of blowout wins last year, wins by five plus. Uh, either they had the most or the second most in the majors. And with some of the guys they've lost, and yes, they're going to win games this year, but I think they could be a more close one. So I'll play it safe here and take Presley because after Presley, we enter the you know, a little bit of the head zone. Plus I can't take Jansen or else Aaron would have a coronary. <laughs> <laughs> we might need some, we might need some backstory to that when he gets taken off the board here. Is that where you're going with this doc? Yeah, I'll take Presley. Story? It's fine. Yeah. Oh no. Well, you're not getting him because I am at seven. I mean, here we talk about someone that was a free agent for most of the spring training and then lockouts over art says, Oh, it's a slam dunk. He goes back to the Dodgers. Nope. Goes to the world series Braves. Will Smith says, hey, look, I want to run it back. I'm in the setup role. They don't sign Kenley Jansen to be the setup guy. He's the closer. Yeah. So what, why do you have coronary about Kenley Jansen, Fags? No, I I mean, from from day one, I was just pumping Kenley Jansen as a guy who was going to move into the top five closers as soon as he signed with any team because he was going there to close. It didn't matter where he went. Uh, 31% K rate and a 1.07 whip. Eight, he converted 82 of his last 97 saves. Uh, so that's pretty good for some guy who everyone says was washed. So mm-hmm. um, I want that guy on my team. I, too bad I, I I didn't get him here. But uh, a lot of Kenley for sure. Yeah. And uh, well, now that he's off the board, who would be your next closer to? Well, actually, you get two picks here. So who would be the two guys that you would look to target to take here? 
yeah so for me this is like this is that this is the cliff for me um in the in the as far as the top relief pitchers go uh and or at least it has been up until uh toronto didn't make a move to bring anyone into the bullpen so i'm gonna take jordan romano um i took him in my wharf league as my number one reliever and uh i've come around on him mostly because toronto hasn't done anything to you know to bring in a guy with uh any sort of uh relevant save history um so i don't know that romano maybe he lucked into that role last year everyone got hurt we all blew our you know we all know the story of julie merriweather and we've all blown our fab on blue jays saves at the beginning of the year chasing last week's <laughs> saves uh but i think this year without another guy in that pen um romano just is the he's the clear-cut guy and it, unless they make a move you know he's going to be on one of the top teams in baseball and uh they've got a super home field advantage this year not allowing uh, unvaccinated players to play in their ballpark um, and so that is just an extra little bonus uh, for Romano and the Blue Jays. So um, give me Romano with my first pick here on, on this turn. Yeah, like you said, plays for a great offense. They should win a lot of games. And if he gets that job and, and runs with it, I mean, this could be a value at the eighth pick. So I mean, this is a great, great target at the end of the first round. But how are you going to kick off the second round? Who are you going to uh. take here? Man, so I've I've done a lot of picking from the end, and I I am Mister Throw the ADP in the trash uh, as soon as I possibly can in any draft, and in this draft, I'm tossing it right out the window right now. I'm taking Jake McGee right here, Woo! and <laughs> and and I'm and I'm and I'm doing it because I, I've said this from the beginning. He had 31 saves last year. Um, uh, we heard Kapler this week talking about Camilla Doval kind of doing the ho hum. Yeah, he's been okay blah, 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 uh, Tyler Rogers injured. So the, I don't even see the competition for McGee here in San Francisco outside of if, you know, it, it's great that Duvall's electric and all those things. I mean, he's faced like 117 batters in his major, in his major league career. So to think that he's going to take this job away from Jake McGee, just because he thinks he's the closer, uh, Gabe Kapler hasn't said that. Um, and so the giants are going to be an, a good baseball team again. Jake McGee, we did a phenomenal job as the closer last season, and I'm ready to run it back with McGee. Also, Aaron, also, also, McGee. also, though, it's mo the most important thing when you're drafting a relief pitcher are the saves. Mm -hmm. So there are mu much there are other guys here who have better ratios, more Ks, all those types of things. But I think that the saves here is why I'm I'm drawn to McGee. Wow, I have to say. I haven't heard anybody. I mean, I haven't heard anybody down on McGee. I've heard them say like maybe him and Doval will split, and you're getting him at a much cheaper cost, which is why he's a benefit to take later. But you are you might be the highest I've heard of anybody on him, and I mean he's a value at this point. I'm I'm, gonna, I'm actually searching his ADP on uh, NFBC. And yeah, get ready, you're gonna get carpal tunnel. Yeah, you, you keep gotta scrolling. Go, you gotta go in about the two fifties. Two hundred and seventy-seven point nine five, the one hundred and seventh overall pitcher off the board. Uh, I mean, Pags. I will say, if, if McGee goes off, you are the McGee guy. As all it, that's that should be like your alternate ego. The that's, where that's, been, that's where I've been. That's <laughs> the definition of hashtag get your guy. It is. Now, did I got to ask for? Uh, now I, I know not, Doc wasn't looking at him, but Greg, you had the sixth pick right there after Doc. Would that have been someone you considered? No. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the long version. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'm not high with a bag of Doritos over here, but it's all good, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. Doc, are you going chalk? Or are you taking Chapman? No, I'm taking Blake Trinan. I think the big concern for oh, him was boy. if uh, if Kenley Jansen came back. And I want to give a shout-out to our guys at Roto-Wire because they were talking about this situation in last week's show. And Dave Roberts came out and basically said, yeah, I'm not. Uh, we're uh, we're not committing to. Uh, or, or he was very ho hum about it. Not we're gonna have a closer by a committee. No one and ever I think recap there's a difference. shows. You don't do it justice. Uh, yeah, no, I, I misconstrued <laughs> the quote, but basically he was non-committal rather than saying we have a committee. And I think there's a difference. And the Dodgers are gonna get a lot of wins. Blake Trinan's on a multi-year deal. He's been the closer before. He had 38 saves with the A's back in 2018. I think it's his job to lose and. I, I you can't believe you let him fall to me at this point. Come on, that's a steal. I mean, I, I'm kind of in on Jake McGee now. That Aaron kind of told me a little bit. <laughs> uh, that was his plan. He's he's 
suckering you guys in to want to move Jake McGee's ADP up 150 spots so <laughs> he can get Camille Duvall 20 picks later. Yeah, it's well, a I'm going to his men pick is 137. Was that you, Pags? That was probably me. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's probably All our right. triple play draft, actually. Oh, was it? It probably I, 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 was. Let's slip me some I'll, cash. I'll, I'll have to look back on that. Uh, all right, we're now back to uh, to Greg. Who are you taking back at the sixth spot here? Um, I, I will I will borrow Aaron's note about um, throwing ADP out the window. However, if you looked at the main events this weekend, he was nestled in right about 101, um, which is a stark contrast to where he was going in DCs or even the – uh, the last two weeks of any online championships on the NFBC. Uh, and and I, I've been told I look a little bit like him. Um, I don't know how or why, <laughs> but I, I'm going to take Taylor Rogers right here. The fact that the twins are in mm. and going for it, I'm not scared of Tyler Duffy. Um, now that um, Rogers is not on the trade block, that harpoons any of the helium on Jorge Alcala. And I think jo- uh, Joan Duran is going to be a multi inning weapon in this bullpen helping uh set up the leverage ladder for the twins and i like what they're doing as far as uh rebuilding this team to compete and i i think doc carter should be a little worried because the the twins have been much smarter with their money this offseason mm-hmm. than the white Sox have and they're a threat to that team right now uh and oh, yeah. i don't think enough people are talking about it and they've got a couple of good pitching prospects on the cusp that could take the spots of these guys like Archer and Pineda. They're bringing in almost as stop gaps until those guys are ready. Uh, so it's going to be really curious to see, but uh, the the two things we know about Rogers is when he's healthy, he, he has a great K to BB rate. Uh, he keeps his ratios low and he can handle left-handed and right-handed hitters. Don't look at that small sample fi- size from last year uh, in his career. He's, he's handled both sides of the plate. Well, so you're looking at a chance that, 30 plus saves right here with very good ratios. And I will sacrifice the strikeouts uh, going for like a Chapman type when I can get Rogers and really solidify my ratio. So if I want to take a chance on the way back, I can. Yeah. And I'm really like that call jumping the ADP to go get him. There's not many guys that you're like, they don't have much competition for saves and that you know that they're going to be consistent, not necessarily blow up too much. And Rogers, I know had some rough patches last year, but he's shown over the last few seasons, he is a dominant reliever. And I trust the track record more than just a, a bumpy couple of months last year. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I mean, go get your guy, and, and and rightfully so, like you saw in the main event drafts, people are are bumping up his ADP. And if you were able to get on one early, you definitely were able to wait a little bit, but not at this point in the draft. This this is a savage draft room right now. I don't know who's <laughs> going where. <laughs> so, uh, Doc, who are you taking? Well, Taylor Rogers was the next guy in my queue, so um, I'm going to pivot off of here, and I'm going to go to the other New York team and go to a role this Chapman here. Um, I think the, the thoughts that his demise is upon us are a little bit premature. Um, I know that Aaron Boone did say this week that, uh, well, over the weekend, I should say that uh, he was thinking about using Chapman in an eighth inning role at times to try to keep him fresh. Um, I, I don't really understand the full wisdom in that. I have to kind of think about that a little bit more, but uh, Chapman well, you're is talking about a- Aaron Boone. <laughs> exactly, exactly him and wisdom yeah. don't usually run congruently no so. no it, it didn't it didn't really make a hell of a lot of sense to me i i think that chapman is another guy that's a really great source of strikeouts uh he had a really 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 terrible three-week stretch last year but other than that he was pretty decent so i think getting him here uh is actually a, a nice place to get him although i i did like taylor rogers there too so greg greg sniped me on him because so you would have taken him right after if he didn't take him <laughs> Woo! okay For sure. I, I can i can dig it all right well i hope that i can snipe a who is that who's after me me all right i don't know if this is where you're gonna be going nate uh, i hope it is so i can i can hear your sigh there's zero chance i sigh i will hold it in like a true professional <laughs> and not let you get the satisfaction he, of knowing you ain't going you ain't going <laughs> will smith on this one huh nate <laughs> oh okay, it's oh fun. man too soon <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, if we're like we said, we're chasing saves here. That's that's the biggest category, but it doesn't hurt this guy can give you double digit K per nine. He seems like he's locked in as of today into the role in that bullpen of a team that's gonna win a lot of games, so he should have a lot of save chances. And uh I think I, I gotta go Corey Knable for Philadelphia. I just think at this point in the draft, 
he he's about as close to a lock for saves as we're going to get going down the, the road here. So uh, Corey Knable would be, I think, where I would go. Nate, did I take your guy, or is your guy still there for you? Yeah, you, you did. I, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I Just because this, who I, I, I don't have to take him, but who I'm going to take, no. it, I don't like it. And I just, and I want Knable, and I'm, I'm hoping, not because I have him, but for your sake, despite you, that the uh, the 50% ground ball rate turns into a ton of errors and he gets I saw that up. on his stack, on his uh, fan grass page. I was like, May, maybe he, that defense behind him is so bad that he doesn't, but I, here, I'm probably, I'm the highest of, of the guys at Reliever Recon. I have uh, Knabel, uh firmly inside the top 10 as far as my closer uh, rankings go. And a lot of that has to do with the variance between my expected inning pitch count. And I think he's far enough past TJ and the, the velocity's up. And I, I know that Greg and uh, Aaron make compelling cases that there could be the Dodgeritis workload relief. And I think that's a possibility as well. But I think that still could manifest into, you know, I, I think a 25 save, 25 floor is always hard to project for anybody. But I'm comfortable with that as Canable. As much as I hate to admit that and build fodder for you, I hate more in the fact of who I have to take, unfortunately. Don't do well, it. I got a perfect to, lead up. Who is it? it it's going to be Giovanni Gag. He squared. Uh, uh, sell out. Uh, it's sell not a sellout. Out. It's just it, it's sell the out. fact that of the of the rest that I see. While that he I drinks his Anheuser Busch, <laughs> sitting in Missouri, <laughs> taking Gian, Giovanni Gallego. <laughs> And I'm so down on Knable. He's 11th in my ranks. I mean, I'm with. I know. I'm, I got him 10th. Him. <laughs> <laughs> I have him seventh. So hey, a, you know, I'm I'm top man. But um, yeah. So realistically, as as we've noted, um, you know, closer by calculation, closer by committee, closer by whatever, it can be just a little uh, helium esque if you want to. And I mean. Gallego says, "I think is of all the guys left, I'm fine with his actual underlying ability. I, I think that he will probably give way to some, but the fact of the matter is, I'm comfortable with uh, a 20 save floor. I think that's what we'll get. I think there's upside for more if he's not just completely taken out. Greg, don't tell me about Jordan Hicks today. I know he <laughs> he pitched. He was electric. He threw a hundred. Well, he I only did. got one whiff. I, I was just yeah. after I went through the stats. I'm like, nah. It's not he never right. gets whiffs though. He's never yeah. done. I mean, it, he just. I don't understand why. It doesn't make sense to me. But guess what? I've I've seen that movie. It ends the same way. It's not Jordan Hicks as much as we want it to be. And I think Gallegos just makes sense. Unfortunately. Ugh, I'm gonna, I don't like let me put it. the let me put the over under for Gallegos. Let me put it at twenty saves. Ooh, under under Ooh. under under. I'll give him twenty one. I'm right. I'm right there. That's a very good over under. Great number. There's there's no one else in. I mean, I, they can talk about closer by calculation all they want. What exactly? You're going to give saves mm -hmm. to Ryan Helsley? No. no. Jordan Hicks? No. I mean, who? Uh, Nick no. Whitman. Alex Reyes, <laughs> if he comes he's back, an enigma. he's hard to He's out for a month. Is he out? Oh. Yeah, he's and out Adam Wainwright's right. final year, they move him back to relief pitching. <laughs> <just> <laughs> <like he's probably. laughs> yeah. There has Before been actually talks. Dust, yeah. Seriously, they've mentioned that. I, hey, I would have no problem. I would easily concede this uh, pick if they make a move and they can bring Kimberl in. And we solidify the ninth and let Guy goes go into that. I'm level. not letting you take Craig Kimbrell. <laughs> I'm not going to take him. Okay. You oh, took Jake McGee oh, 80 picks early. You're, you're good. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, Barty. I, did, is Craig Kimbrell where you're going to go next, or you have another closer in mind? No, no, no. I was. I mean, I was really hoping for um, Corey Knable, as everyone else was. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna go to Mr. Scott Barlow from the Kansas City Royals, uh, mm. projected for 21 saves. Um, speaking of whiff percentage, I mean, his was in the 95th percentile. So, and escape percentage is in the 86th percentile. Over the over 74.1 innings last year, he had a 2.42 ERA, 91 strikeouts. I think the Royals are going to be improved by more by improved. I mean, 10 games under 500. You know, we'll take that. Um, yeah, I think, he, and he has the role, and I don't have to worry about that. I smell yeah. a second round side bet here on who, who which reliever has the most saves and out of the second round. Ooh, that could be fun. Okay, that. hold on. So, I guess write that down. LCB. Write that down, down for that. Yeah. This okay, is so oh, I'll give if you. We're that. gonna go with. Oh, I, I got that. Go. I got that one. Okay. 
I'm going to go with Melanson because I think he has a chance to have the most saves out of the second round. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, gosh. Worst pick of the draft. Good night. No Good night, way, all. Man. No way, Melanson. He's going to have. Hey, he listens to this podcast. You guys have to speak kind of him. Mark, exactly. Melanson's going to be great for Arizona. My third round pick is Joe Barlow. I think Barlow has a chance to get back some of those minor league Ks that he didn't seem to have last season, but he was up around 15, 15, 16 Ks per nine in the minors. I think he could, I think he could produce some more of those Ks this season in the majors. They ha- uh, they signed, who did they sign? Uh, and um, someone who hasn't been good in about three or four seasons, an old ex closer. Greg Holland. Yeah. Greg, Greg Holland. Holland. Yeah. yeah. They signed Holland who hasn't been a closer for a few seasons. And they did that with Ian Kennedy a few seasons ago. And I never like how the Rangers treat their bullpen. But for now, I think Barlow has a, has a shot the job. He looked like he was ready to go with that spot. Um, I like his talent. I think he has that strikeout ability he showed. So I'm, 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 I'm crossing my fingers and going with Joe Barlow as my uh, first pick of the third round. What happened to Jonathan Hernandez? Did he just like fall off the face of the earth? He's he's rehabbing. He'll be back. They, they're maybe second half. They don't want to rush him. Yeah. And who's the who's the other closer or for them? Jose Leclerc might be. Jose back Leclerc, yeah. Oh man. They won't put. They didn't want to put him on the sixty day IL because they think he can beat that timeline. Yeah, I mean they've had so many closers over the last few years. I just, I mean whether it's through injury or, or bad performance. LC, I think that's like a place where closers go to die. I don't know if I trust them in Texas. To tell me Greg reads too much without saying Greg reads too much because <laughs> I know all this stuff right on the moment, and it's ridiculous. My poor girlfriend, she's the most patient person alive. <laughs> well, thanks, Kate. I'm, it's going to be interesting then when we get to the game to see how, how really are how you how good you are at that stuff because it's going to be uh, going down memory lane talking about some of these closers here. Um, Marty, back to you for your third pick. All right, David Bednar. Nothing sexy here. Uh, Pittsburgh uh, Pirates. 19, projected, you ain't getting them. Projected for 19 saves. Uh, last year he went 62 point, um, yeah, 60.2 innings, 77 strikeouts. And you actually go to his um, StatCast page. StatCast page. He's a darling, man. I mean, XERA is in the 97th percentile. XBA is in the 93rd percentile. He limits hard contact. That's in the 92nd percentile. 94th percentile K rate. Everything looks great there. So obviously the team, just like the Royals, probably won't have too many uh, save opportunities, but he's going to get all of them and uh, make the most of them. Yeah, I, I, I like that pick there. Uh, he seems like the guy in that bullpen. Just I think the question will be obviously how many uh, saves will he get with that team, but definitely a guy that should get you some saves. Let's go now to uh, our next pick up here, and that may be Mr. Nate Markham, who you got. Hmm. The good news is, is it's back to back now, where at least the person who I wanted, Garrett, that's it's not uncommon when you get into this grouping. But I do love David Bednar; he's turning into a a favorite for a number of us. And I'm gonna go to who I hope, if I can, if I can wish, uh, I guess, some magic dust on a person whose uh, walk rate can just hover under the ten uh, percent range is uh, Gregory Soto. We. Uh, mm. <laughs> Love the K upside, of course. I think the Detroit, I think the Tigers are not as bad as what many uh, assume. I don't think they're going to be great, but I think that they put him in a. You know, I think he can see twenty saves. I really do, and I don't really worry about Michael Fulmer as much. I think Fulmer might be more of the fireman roles, and his his velocity is down. But I think we've talked enough about velo issues in spring that I'm not going to use that as any uh, major concern. But you know, anytime you can get. 30% K rate with your, uh, with your third closer. I, I think I'll gladly take that. Is it just in your mind for me, Fulmer or Soto? Like as far as Fulmer could be the only competition for saves in that bullpen. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, I, I, I don't see them. I don't see them even going out and bringing anybody else in for competition wise. But I mean, I think that's kind of been the indication the entire time. And I know a lot of people that are higher on Fulmer than I am, but I think Fulmer might be a better, overall pitcher than Soto, but I think Soto has nastier stuff and might be just more suited for that night. And they got a better team this year. So, I mean, he could have some chances at saves or a lot more chances at saves. Okay. I, I respect the pick there. I, I guess Andrew Chafin is, is, is unfair to not mention him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but bringing, we, him, bringing him in helps insulate Soto. And that's what now I feel. You don't have to worry about Soto in the six because they can bring in Chafin. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. 
All right, guys, I'm going off the wall for this next pick. You would think I'd go safety and Craig Kimbrell and hope for those saves. No, no, no. This is a guy I love. I love Anthony Bender. Bend it like Anthony here. So mm -hmm. I think obviously that you have the injury right now affecting Dylan Floro potentially for the start of the year. Anthony Bender is the better reliever. I think everybody knows that, but they were wondering if they were just going to use him in more of the, the guy, hey, let's have him face the best part of the lineup and kind of use him in that fireman role in that, in that sense. But, I mean, StatCast page is so red. Like, if you were a bull, you can't look at it because there's so much red on there. I mean, the barrel percentages, hard hit percentages, whiff rates, he's just freaking nasty. Obviously, uh, you know, the, the Marlins are going to hopefully win some more games this year. He's the best reliever in that bullpen. you got to tell me it's, it's between him and Anthony Bass at this point. Like, please. Like, they already did that experiment last year. Please let this guy close. I think he'd be a hidden gem if they let him start out the year closing and he would produce and then hopefully keep the job. So I think I'm all in on Anthony Bender at this point in the draft. Mattingly does like to have one guy to go to. He likes that that path, uh, at least in the ninth inning. Bender was really good for him in uh, different situations last year, uh, kind of that fireman role or the high leverage reliever. Um, and so uh, without another guy who's actually locking down the ninth, I, I actually really do. Uh, Bender's one of the guys who flew up the ranks once you saw that Flora was a little bit behind mm -hmm. with, his, with his shoulder and stuff. So way up, way up. All right, Mike Carter, you're next. Who are you going with? This is going to um... – this is my perennial guy, Lucas Sims. Um, I know he's hurt to start the year. I don't know how how, how hurt he is. Um, I don't think he's that hurt, <laughs> quite honestly. But last year, you know, he had the he had a fourteen point five K nine rate. Um, his ERA was four point four, but his xERA was two point five one. Uh, I just like a lot of things that he brings to the table, and I think with uh, with Garrett out of there, and I know a lot of people like Art Warren, and I can understand that. I, I think. Sims is by far their best option. I don't know how many saves he'll get. The team is not going to be obviously as good as what they were last year. It does not appear, at least on paper, to be. And I just really like Sims. I think he's a guy that, if it, given an opportunity, could really, really take it and run with it. They've never really given him much of a chance. Um, so let's see what happens this year. I know it's a bit of a gamble here, but I'm, I'm willing to roll the dice on him here. Do you think if you today had to sit here, you think he starts out opening day? For the team, or is he on the IL to start the year? It sounds like he's going to start the season on the IL just because he's a little bit behind. But it, 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 it I, famous last words, right? <laughs> it doesn't sound like he's going to miss a lot of time, but I don't think any of us really know. Um, I, and I think that if he gets an opportunity there, he, he's he's a, a guy that could easily finish in the top fifteen of closers in the game. Yeah, for sure. All right, we are now on Mr. Greg's Jewett's pick here. Who are you looking at? I, I I was gonna go a different direction, but I didn't think that this would fall. Uh, I don't do this often, but I've done a complete 180 on Matt Barnes. Ah, you um, I <laughs> I did not think the Red Sox would not address the ninth inning because I thought they wanted to put him back into the fireman role where he really excelled. Um, however, his first half last year, and I know this the sticky substance and whatever. Uh, but I did go back and watch his outing the other day where he struck out the side. And, and the key with Barnes is locating the fastball. If he's locating the fastball, then he's he's in 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 command with his with his stuff. And you can see, it. I mean, all you have to do is go back and look at the first half last year when he made the All Star team. He was um, unbelievable. So uh, I I'll take a chance at strikeout upside and a guy again. I mean, who's going to challenge him right now? Jake Diekman, who walked the bases loaded the other day. Hansel Watch Robles, your mouth. I don't Watch think so. Mouth. Yeah, that that was that was an exact dig for a reason. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and, and and a good team. So, I mean, technically, if you look at my rankings on the site right now, I've got three relievers inside my top fifteen, which I'll be happy with. Do you think that Garrett Whitlock potentially goes back to the bullpen and is competition for him, or do you think Whitlock gets more of a shot at the rotation? I think at the worst, Whitlock ends up as uh, as the Returning to his highest leverage role, which would be he'll he'll pitch like the sixth and seventh or seventh and eighth when they need him, and then Barnes will come in and clean up the clean up the ninth. Exactly, um, I, I think that would be their ideal plan. They want to be able to have Whitlock um, record four outs or more in the outings that he goes, and he'll get two days off, and then he comes back in 
they, they could almost technically use Whitlock like a right-handed hater back when he was cutting his teeth as the setup reliever on the Brewers. And the Brazier experiment is over. Oh, yeah, no, Bra- Brazier, no. It no, never started. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I just think Barnes could be a very, very cheap 25 saves at this point in the draft. For sure. I like it. All right, now we're at you, uh, at Eric. Who are you taking here? So I'm going to take a handcuff, and I'm taking Chad Green. I do think that the demise of Chapman is going to start coming. So Chad Green last season threw 83.2 innings. So 3.12 ERA, he had six saves. But if Chapman goes down or if he struggles, I think he's going to be the first one in line there. And I don't think Aaron Boone has as long a leash. I mean, look, Chapman's 34 years old. He had a 1.31 whip last year. We saw how bad he can be during that three-week stretch. It would have been even worse if he didn't get that triple play against the A's. So <laughs> I think he's he's just very based on velocity. And once he starts to lose that, he's an average closer, and he's not going to have that long leash. He struggled mightily when the sticky stuff stuff, the sticky stuff stuff went into place there. And um, I'm, my question to you guys, though, is it Chad Green or is it Jonathan Loisica? Because I feel like I've heard Loisica might be the, the guy to hang I prefer Loisica, but... Mm-hmm. That's because they like Green, just like I was talking about Whitlock. They like the they like Green's ability to go multi innings. I think Loizica's injury history is going yes. to shift him more into a one inning reliever. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that would be the only reason. Now the plus side with the Green pick is we're playing a five by five roto. The Yankees rotation is not very good, so Green could get all kinds of vulture wins just like he did last year. So that's still if you get if you get double digit wins and seven to eight saves from a guy at this point in the draft, I think you'd be very happy, especially because he could give you 95 to a hundred strikeouts. Yeah. All right. Pags, your last pick of the third and then kicking off the last round here in the fourth, who are your two guys you're taking? That was a great segue, Greg, because, uh, Chad Green was one of the guys who didn't have 20 saves last year, but finished as a relief pitcher in the top 150. But he did have he did have 10 wins. There was only one reliever who didn't have 10 wins and didn't have 20 saves who finished in the top 150 last year. Damn it! And yeah, you're taking Kitty. Yeah, and and that's Andrew it. and that's Andrew Kittredge. Um, now <laughs> with the news that Peter Fairbanks is going to be out for a little while. Last year, See, if I didn't I, take Barnes, that was my dude. <laughs> last year, um, Toronto or Toronto Tampa use Diego Castillo more in a traditional closer role for a lot longer than most people would, would lead you to believe. Um, Kittredge, you know, actually settled into that kind of a situation later in the year. Um, <clears throat> he just, he has the K upside. He has, uh, you know, some, a lot of unknown competition behind him. And uh, with Fairbanks sidelined, uh, that was his main competition. So give me uh, Andrew Kittredge here for sure. So that's, that's a really solid pick. Yeah. Uh, so now it's my last pick, right? Mm-hmm. Oh man, this is all right. Which bullpen am I going to take a shot at? Uh, let's go. Um, man, this is a tough one. Let's, uh, yeah, let's 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 take a stab. Let's take a stab at San Diego and go <laughs> with Robert Suarez. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. This um, is a throw your dart. <clears throat> Yeah, throw your dart, but you, you know it, it's your last pick in the draft, right? So yeah, you you you're trying to you want to win or finish last doesn't matter here in this in this draft. So uh, last year, uh, no one got the San Diego bullpen right. Mark Melanson led baseball in saves. Um, this year, I think Roster Resource has eleven guys tabbed as the closer <laughs> in uh, San Diego or something like that. So uh, I'll I'll take one of the guys with a CL next to their name. Uh, Suarez throws the ball triple digits. Uh, you know we got to see it in the big leagues, of course. But uh, why not? All right. Fair enough. I can dig it. I'll laugh if someone else takes another Padres closer <laughs> in this uh, fourth round here. I could, but I'm picking too early. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eric, who's your last pick? You know, for me, once again, we're, I'm, I'm doing the handcuff thing. I'm thinking of season long, and I'm going Devin Williams. I think Milwaukee's Achilles heel is going to be their hitting, and their strength is pitching both starting and bullpen. I could see if a team's willing to pay a premium for Hader. I mean, they did sign him to a one-year, $11 million deal to avoid arbitration. But if they don't want to pay him that top-tier money for years to come, I think they trust Devin Williams as the closer. I know he only has three career saves, but I just look at that 2020 season. Four and one, .33 ERA in 22 appearances. He's going to give you good ratios regardless. 
And I don't know if you've seen some of the pitches he's thrown this spring. Filthy. And he's added a cutter. So, yeah. hey, I mean, look, we're playing the season long game. We'll probably see an increase in pitcher injuries, which means I got to take these handcuffs. All right. Well, Eric's going with two, well, one established closer. Blake Trotten, you'd expect to be the closer, but it's not a guarantee at this point. And then two handcuffs. So you might be hurting as for as far as saves are concerned, but you probably have good ratios in this league. Uh, Greg, your last pick would be who? I'm hemming and hawing here. Uh, I don't want to do it because it feels dirty. Um, but, yeah, I, I hate to say it, but I'm going to have to take Lou Trevino. Ooh, Luckily, I've got Lou. Presley and Rogers to insulate my uh, – my ratio statistics, and I'm hoping I'm getting the good barns. Um, again, you, you you look at the and I, I didn't wear this A's hat on purpose, but you're looking at the the surrounding bullpen out there, and you know, hey, we all we all drool about the possibility of AJ Puck as a closer, or uh, you know, other other situations. But behind him is Diolas, Guerra, and Domingo Acevedo for for saves right now. And again, the o Oakland's not going to be very good this year. Uh, they have a new manager, Katze, who I, I think will probably follow what Melvin did with a with a with a kind of a linear pathway to saves. And everything I read says that he's the closer. So if if he's my worst closer in this scenario, I'm okay with taking it. Um, if if I wasn't taking a a person for saves only, then I would have taken Denelson Lamette just to just to take a little shot at Mr. Suarez there because <laughs> if Lamette can pitch on consecutive days, he's got the best stuff in that bullpen. I, I do believe in Lamette, but um, I'm just playing it safe here with Trevino because that's who I am. Unfortunately, no chance that AJ Puck could sneak into that role. There's a chance, but A, we need him to be healthy, and B, he has to throw strikes. He, he's probably at the beginning curve of where Soto is, you know, now. I mean, he's, he's, at, the, he's at the press. He's, he's at the start. He, he's probably going to take a year to get where Soto is, but we need health. I mean, we can't keep this guy on the mound. Again, I, I love the talent, and I think he could be very similar. His skill set aligns very closely with Andrew Miller. But until he does it, we're we're just we're just reaching that pie in the sky. All right, that Oakland A's bullpen. Should, uh, the team may not be exciting, but I, I like some of the arms in that bullpen. It should be kind of intriguing there. Uh, back to you, Doc Carter, for your last pick. Yeah. So I've given this some thought. You know, I mean, um, obviously, you know, nobody really knows what's going to happen in the Seattle bullpen. And oh, I, don't and you I, do it, Mike. Don't you do it. <laughs> do it. So. I'm not gonna. Oh. I let I'll let you. I'll let somebody else do that. But um, I'm going to go with Tanner Rainey here. Um, okay. I think that um, he's the guy that Davey Martinez really wants to see take that role in Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think anybody's sold on Kyle Finnegan being the closer for anything more than a couple of weeks at most. Um, Rainey has got the pedigree. He's the guy that they've wanted to be, have be that closer for two years. There's really no reason for them not to give him an opportunity because they're going to stink. Um, and so I, I, I think that he's an, he's a guy that's a real dark horse candidate to get 25 to 30 saves. I think I read something today that they said they're giving him every opportunity to be the closer, but his velocity, of course, like everybody else was down and they wanted mm -hmm. to get back up. But I did read that they expect for him to open the season as the closer, which could be, you know, how many saves is that? I don't know, but anytime right. you hear someone's supposed to be the closer at this point, you got to, their, their ADP is going to go up. So I think that's a, a pretty solid pick there. Um, we brought up the Seattle bullpen and <laughs> there's like three or four guys you could pick from. Where are you going? <laughs> I, it's interesting because if you ask me in different times I've drafted, I've taken different Seattle relievers. I do think if you were like in a really, really deep league, Andres uh, Munoz could not be a, necessarily a bad option here. Mm -hmm. But I think the best overall reliever in this bullpen and I think should be the closer is Paul Seawall. I mean, you look across the board, expected batting average, elite, his uh, K percentage, elite, nearly 40% K percentage last year, expected ERA, lower than his actual ERA, walked under 10% 10, uh, 10 of batters last year. Uh, I, I think this is by far the best guy in this bullpen, and I'm, I'm hoping Seattle uses him that way and not a fire. Uh, you're not, not a guy that's going to just pitch, you know, 
through six or two innings and pitch to six batters, be their fireman type of guy. I'm interested. Do you guys think he's the best reliever in this bullpen and should be the closer? Or do you think that Seattle goes in a different direction? I think he's I, the I think he's the best reliever in their bullpen, but I don't think he's the closer. I don't think I, Seattle will have a closer. They they yeah, just I mean, they're they're copying Tampa Bay or at least trying to. Um, we we label these guys as the highest leverage reliever, which means he'll go in at the point where they need him the most to win a game. So if mm-hmm. it's in the seventh inning, it's then. If it's in the eighth, it's then. If it's ninth, it's then. So he will get a handful of saves. But it's just best to temper your save total um, with that in mind. And, and, you know, you can put him right in that bucket with Gallegos, Trinan, mm-hmm. and, and people of that nature. Mm-hmm. Um, the, just... the, one, the one monkey wrench, though, is Ken Giles, right? They went out and got yes, him uh, while he was injured. And right. who knows if their organizational plan was when he comes back, we're just going to hand him the ninth and have all these other guys pitch behind him and, and be the bridge to him. We haven't seen that yet. But um, that is the one. That is the one monkey wrench in Paul Seawalt's. Uh, it is. And, but why haven't they said it if that's going to be the case? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but G- Giles can't really have any other role other than the ninth, really. If you think about it, right? Those, those other guys yeah. all can do other things. Giles really can't. It doesn't appear. Correct. Do you guys think that's that, a fair point? Do you guys think that since Seattle is kind of all in on contending this year and, and making the playoffs? It'd be nice to go the Rays route of being able to just play multiple guys, but if there's one guy that's consistently locking it down and they're trying to win games and make the playoffs for the first time since 2001, that they wouldn't mess with somebody that's that's delivering in that role and they could go one closer. Mm-hmm. Well, I think they'll do the hot hand. So if somebody's hot, mm-hmm. they'll they'll go with them. But with the same token, they also, I mean, Giles like Chapman and a couple of others, Will Smith, they're on expiring contracts, so. Even if Seattle is in contention, if they feel they can get better by trading Giles and getting something else that they need to win, they'll do it. I mean, right, they already did that, that with Graveman. Yeah, they already did that. Yeah, with Graveman, yeah, so. they, they've proven that they don't care that they're going to do whatever it takes to make their team better. So if they need a hypothetically third baseman at the trade deadline, they can get one by trading Giles. They will. Um, it's just yeah. you, you just have to know all you just anticipate all that during the season. And, you know, and the other thing, too, is if Seattle starts out where they do this uh, hot hand approach and they're actually successful, Dave, and they, they're they winning games and, and we say we want them to follow this philosophy where they're winning ball games. If it's not broke, don't fix it. So then it makes you think, will they ever get away from that? If that's a successful uh, approach and they, they do win the ball games, that's the scary, that's the scariest thing for me is if that approach works great, then you have this closer you know and it's segments of bad of opponents too that they already have picked out the way know you have the three four and five hitters whatever inning they come up that's where they're going to put uh seawall in but from a roster construct i'll tell you dave uh manual class a what was the biggest bugaboo for him for not being in the top two or three is that k rate right well mm-hmm. now you just supplanted that with seawall where you at least elevate that just a little bit so it was a very good strategy on your behalf good job oh. Thank you. I'll take that. Anytime you want to compliment me, Nate, I'll stop the show so we can let you yeah. do that. <laughs> know your audience. That's how you get back on here, boys. I love you, man. <laughs> All right, Nate. It's, uh, it's up to you. Um, it is the ugliest pick. I realize that. And I find myself uh, You're taking you them up and up. Yes, that is wow. very, very well stated. Thank you so much. It's I, all love. I'm taking Cole Sulcer. I, I knew have, it. I, I mean, nice. it's... I didn't intentionally find myself being the Cole Sulcer apologist, and I definitely don't think that the Orioles are going to be good per se. But the idea now that they are, you know, I, I don't see much competition. I mean, I know Tanner Scott's done it before, but, you know, you don't have to worry about Wells because they're stretching him out. Mm-hmm. I, I think that what we've seen out of Sulcer is that we've seen consistent supportable ratio. So a 270 RA with a 291 XERA, a 298 FIP, um, you know, a, a 113 whip with a 28% K rate and a, and a sub 10 walk rate. Everything says that if he has the role, he would deliver solid ratios and supportive, probably lackluster save totals. But like we've said before, there's no way the Orioles lose 20 games in a row every single every month like they've done before. They they're bound to just to accidentally walk into one, and you move that left field fence in or out just a little bit, and that probably helps absorb just even a little bit more of those potential long balls. I can't believe I have a Baltimore Oriole, a, a Detroit Tiger uh, as my two uh, back end closers, but you know what? It's gonna it's 
going to be okay. I love it. All right, Marty, Art, give us your two picks real quick here to wrap us up. Starting with you, Marty. Yeah, so I'm going to go with Mr. Rowan Wick because apparently right. he, he might have the role. Yeah, so uh, LC, that's your that's your coach <laughs> that's your guy. LC, sorry to take him, but yeah, he's looking at um, 18 saves projected right now. He's you know he's considered to have the role as my last as my last uh, relief pitcher. That's who I'm swinging with. All right, LC, your last pick is Camilo Duvall. I was gonna say was somebody's gonna say, take Camilo Duvall. He's in the he's the only guy in just taking him top to... 20. Yeah, <laughs> I was like I was like. Am I the only one who notices that he's still on the board? <laughs> no, I knew he was there, but I felt like I loved the I Jake told you I played pitch. it safe. I didn't want to. Uh, this obviously is a good value here. Uh, is that why you're taking him at this point? Yeah, I think you know there's there's a chance he he finished the season as the closer. I think he got the last five save opportunities for San Francisco to close out the season last year. Um, I mean, normally I would. I would not want to wade in these waters, but as the 32nd reliever in our relief pitcher draft, I think he's a he's a fine value pick at this point. Yeah, and I'm just real quick for everybody at home that's listening. This is the teams I'll run through real quick. LC, Liam Hendricks, Mark Melanson, Joe Barlow, Camilo Duvall, Marty, Josh Hader, Scott Barlow, David Bednar, Rowan Wick, Nate, Raisel Iglesias, Giovanni Gallegos, Gregory Soto, Coe Sulcer, I took Emmanuel Class A, Corey Knabel, Anthony Bender, and Paul Seawald. Mike Carter took Edwin Diaz, Aroldis Chapman, Lucas Sims, and Tanner Rainey. Greg took Ryan Presley, Taylor Rogers, Matt Barnes, and Lou Trevino. Doc took Kenley Jansen, Blake Trinan, Chad Green, and Devin Williams. And Pags finishes out here with Jordan Romano, Jake McGee, Andrew Kittredge, and Robert Suarez. Very solid relief pitcher draft all around. Everybody feel like they have the best relief pitcher team out of everybody here? You feel good about it? I just feel bad for whoever is in second. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I feel bad for them, too. Doc, you're going to be in last. <laughs> I'm going to have to. We'll maybe see. We can, we'll see. Maybe we could see. Uh, I'll, I don't know how I could plug it in to see uh, who would finish first out of all our, our guys at the end of the season. I'd actually be really interested to see if there was a relief pitcher only league. To see how these we, teams would do. Uh, got one. Actually, do you? we yeah we we join with uh, it's Tribo, so that stands for the oh man, I'm gonna butcher it. I can't remember. Yeah, but you're yeah. not gonna get it right. <laughs> it's it is it's a uh, it is like a three by three. <laughs> uh, I guess you know uh, really pitcher only where you get yeah. inherited runners, stranded, K rate, ERA, WHIP, uh, relief wins, and save holds. Uh, mm -hmm. So solds. And Fantastic. it's, yeah, I can send you over the draft board at some point if you ever want to take a look and see, because it really like, like Blake Trinan is a top five pick, top six pick. Uh, Gallegos is even higher up. There's, yeah. there's a lot of interesting picks with, uh, with some of these caveats yeah. too, because the, the K rate really starts to move some of those mm -hmm. Paul Seawalds up a little bit. Inherited runners are hard relief wins, but yeah. I love it. That's fantastic. I, I would definitely love to see the draft board. And see yeah, it was, it's out. a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, without further ado, guys, again, great draft. We got to get to the second half of the show, and we're going to do it nice and quick like we always do. Starting our course with our question of the week sponsored by Odds Jam. I'm not going to play the ad video, but if you guys want to get a, a leg up on the betting market, go to oddsjam.com. They basically run through thousands of simulations where you're able to find out the best odds over a bunch of sites that they look over and then be able to win some pretty easy money. So make sure you check out Odds Jam. Our question of the week this week, I'll pop it up on screen so everybody can see. If you were to go backpacking and camping with any current Major League Baseball player, who would it be and why? So everybody, you got to give me your answer in about 60 seconds or less. Just give us give us the Cliff Notes version of why that would be. Nate, you're at the bottom of the screen, so I'm going to start with you. Who would you pick? Daniel Norris. Remember Daniel Norris? Lived in a van. Yeah. <laughs> who would you That's not right. take? Dude, lives in a van. I'm not ready. He can. He took, you know he has guy, that. Just so you know, that's oh, who I was picking. Daniel Morris. He literally he lived in a van. And the, a van. Go check out the Vice YouTube. It's amazing. Anyway, sorry. Go yeah. ahead. No, that's that says enough. I mean, I I want someone who's done it. Now the no TV thing means I can't watch ball games and stuff. But then again, yeah, you know, we're camping. We're not supposed to be. I didn't know Daniel Norris lived in a van. 
<laughs> that that common knowledge, like Marty, you knew it, and I guess Greg knew it too. I didn't Outside know that. Of a yeah, he was in a Volkswagen camper. He was in it yeah. for a couple of years. That was wow. pretty incredible. That's the easy answer. I guess, uh, Pags, who did you go with? Well, I'll take Max Scherzer. I don't know if he's a robot or what with the two different color eyes, but if we got attacked by a bear, Scherzer's running at the bear. You know that for a fact, right? Like he's not running away. He took on he took on the owners. He even voted against his own players' union when the lockout was was coming to an end. So if this man can do anything, he's not scared of anyone or anything. So give me give me some protection if I'm out there. So I'll take Scherzer. I like that angle. And Marty, I know you went with Daniel Norris as well. So that that will double for him. Greg, who was your pick? Uh I would, I mean, since I'm going to be camping with this person, there's going to be some pretty good conversation and I want some entertainment. So I think the a person I would love to have a beer with and talk would be Joey Votto. So that mm. that's my guy. Yeah. Uh, plus he's from Canada. We can handle the mountains. It's all good. So <laughs> yeah, I, I'll take Joey. And again, like I said, I, I've always been a fan of him um, just watching the games, even though I'm not a Reds person and, you know, I, I just like how he carries himself. And like I said, I, I think there'd be some great, great three beers in conversations with that guy, whether we're talking mm -hmm. hitting baseball, life, whatever. So Votto's Votto for me. Yeah, I think he checks every single box for someone you'd want to camp with for the exact reasons you said. Doc, when you're on this show, you always have some really good answers. So I'm curious who your pick was for this. Well, you know, I, I gave it a lot of thought, and I think I'm, I'm going to go homer on this one, so probably a little disappointing. But Liam Hendricks is one of the more interesting guys that we've run across in Chicago here in a long time. You know, he's from the Australian Outback, probably be able to keep me pretty safe from uh, anything that might be creeping up on me. He likes to have a few beers, as do I. Uh, he's a, an emotional guy. Uh, he's screaming and swearing on the mound all the time. I, I really love what he does. And, uh, I think he'd really be a lot of fun to hang around with for a week. Yeah. That accent would probably be really fun just in itself, hearing him <laughs> talking that. So I, I'm with mm -hmm. you, doc. LC, your pick. Uh, someone who has a big new contract can buy some really good camping snacks. <laughs> Freddie Freeman, <laughs> Freddie Freeman's yeah. just for the money. He has, he's in California too. There's some good camping spots out there. <laughs> Fly me out. We can talk. I mean, we can talk some some baseball. Talk you bougie, you know, winning man. the World Series. Hey, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna glamp with Freddie Freeman. Oh man. Okay. All right. Da, uh, Eric, who was your pick? It's got to be Ty Butchery. So we've spoken with Ty a couple times. Yeah, was big RVing during the MLB lockout. Yeah. Big outdoors camping guy. We already know him. So it's not awkward, like, oh, what if they don't like me? That We're cool. We're cool. We're going to have a good camping trip, and it's going to be so fun. He's going to retire from MLB again. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. My pick, there was three things I was looking at. Number one, they had to be young because I was like, if we're going to be hiking, potentially anything that comes up, they got to have the young body to be able to adapt, to be able to do what they need to do. Number two, they have to be able to hunt because if we run out of food and we have to go and – and do what we need to do. I know they need to be a big hunter. And number three, they have to be a good time. So someone checked every box of that for me, and that was Grayson Rodriguez. I saw him, like, if you follow him on Instagram, all he posts is hunting, like, pictures, besides baseball. He's obviously young. He's uh, He's got some personality. He's good friends with Adley Rushman. They post a lot of, like, funny stuff they do together. So I think he'd be an awesome time, and uh, I think he would do everything I would need to do for camping. So I think he'd be my answer. But great answers all around, regardless. So any of those guys would be good to go camping with, for sure. Let's go to the last segment of the night, though. And that's, of course, our game of the week. Let me get our mute music going here, as we do every single week here now. No, this is not it. This is it. All right. So I'm hosting the game this week. And we have a bunch of relief pitcher guys here. So it had to be a relief pitcher game. Oh my Only gosh, is it, is it what I think it is? It probably is. I kind of alluded it a little bit earlier. So I have 10 questions here. You guys answer and buzz in by saying your name, just your first name. And I'll be giving you clues on a reliever that could have pitched any time over the last 20 years. Okay? So I'll be giving you clues, and the first person to buzz in with their name and guess the reliever gets the point. Pretty simple, right? Yeah. Yeah, All right. Greg has the advantage because he's been alive longer than everybody, so that just seems unfair. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm at a disadvantage once again, David. <laughs> no, these are all relievers you all know. You all know okay. these guys. So okay. I didn't make cool, it too cool. obscure. Okay. Some of the, all right, let's just start it off. Number one, I pitched from 2004 to 2013, playing for the Twins and the White Sox. I was never used for saves very much, as I only had four of them in my career, but I had eight seasons with a sub four ERA and was a very effective eighth inning reliever. I had no mustache, but I had a lot of chin stubble. Some could even say like a goatee. And any, by the way, if you know it, you can just buzz in at any time. You don't have to wait for me to keep reading. Uh, my initials are JC. Eric. Go ahead. Jesse Crane. Correct. Oh, no. Oh, and the good game. One. And the <laughs> game. Good guess. That's good. I <laughs> feel a complete brain fart there. He only knows Jesse. that because I'm a huge Twins fan, so he remembers their, their I wasn't going to get it until you said the initials, I'll be honest. Okay. <laughs> I had one more clue, but luckily we didn't need it. Okay. My uh, next one. I pitched from 2003 to 2015, pitching for six teams, most notably the Marlins, the Cubs, Blue Jays, and Orioles. I wore goggles on the mound. Eric. Eric. Go ahead, Eric. Kevin Gregg. Boom. Two for two. Damn. Nice job. All right, keep track of your own score. But uh, Eric right now is running away with it. Oh, man. Question three. I pitched from 1992 to 2007 for five teams. <laughs> Notably for my time with the Brewers and the Indians, the then Indians, I was a big boy for my Eric. Home. Greg, oh, damn it. Joe Borowski. Incorrect. Oh, no. Jose oh, Mesa. God, Incorrect. Oh, sugar. Oh, my gosh. I know who it is now. Uh, I've got our, our buddy can Joey I, checking can out. I, can, up, I Joey? Buzz, can I buzz back in, David? No. No, no. no the, the rule no, we're is out. everybody can get a guess before mm. you can go ahead and answer again. I have more clues. Three. So, uh, what was the last clue I was at? Okay, so I was a big boy for my height at 6'1", 207 pounds. I had my career high of saves with 45 during the 2005 season with the then Indians with a sub-3 ERA. I was also an all-star that year. Two-time all-star in my career. Mike? My, someone get, oh, I'm sorry. Mike? Who but, go ahead. Doug, jo Doug Jones? Incorrect. David, my look, initials, at your phone, look at your phone because I texted you the right answer. <laughs> my initials are BW. You did. Oh my God! B I hate myself. <laughs> please, just give me the point, please. No. My initials B are B. B w. You guys. Yeah. Are nice. yes, please. Please, I had forty-five David. saves with the Indians. This is one this is Bob, right? Oh, uh, Aaron. oh, I know. Oh, Aaron, Aaron, uh, Aaron, yeah. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. But Greg, Aaron. you were out of it. Aaron, Aaron. Bob Wick. I know. Yeah. Bob Wick, yeah. Bob you want to? Aaron, you want, I, I feel like I should give the assist to Greg on yeah, that give, one. Yeah, give Greg a half there. Oh, no, I, he, he had it before me with the text, but. Uh, Aon, our buddy Aon, check it in too. Bob Wickman, it, yeah, they nice. know, they know. Mm -hmm. Good oh, one. My gosh. I, Man, I forgot myself. all about Bobby Wickman. I jumped too early on big guy with Mesa. I should have waited <laughs> yeah, six as one. As Once as it was 6-1, Mesa was out. I was like, God damn. As soon as I said Joe Borowski, I was like, oh, wait, no, no, that's not his name. Yeah. <laughs> right yeah, shirt, so. wrong cue. <laughs> I will give you credit, Doc. You did text me it before I announced it. All right. Uh, number four. I pitched from 1993 to 2008 for eight teams, most notably for the Detroit Tigers, where I accumulated between 28 and 42 saves from 1997 to 2000. All right. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. I heard Art first. Is that Doug Jones? Aaron. Marty. Aaron, 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 Aaron. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. <laughs> I think I think Eric got it first. Go ahead, Todd Eric. Jones. Todd Jones. Oh, it is Todd Jones. Yes. I was gonna say, well I known for my mustache. Sugar. I'm so upset at myself now. God, Art, you should have <laughs> known that. Come on. I did know it. I should have known it. He also closed for the Cubs for a while, I think. Todd yeah, Jones. Did. Yeah. All right. Next one. I pitched from 1999 to 2009 for three teams, notably the Orioles and the Blue Jays. You knew me most when I had back to back. Eric. Go Eric. ahead. Chris Ray. Incorrect. You mean when I had back to back 30 plus save seasons in Baltimore, where I averaged over 12 Ks per nine and had ERAs under 2.5? My first name has two letters in it. Nate. Go ahead. BJ Ryan. Correct. Nate is on Ryan. the board. That was good. That was good. Nate. Thanks. Nice about time. All right. Our next guy. 
I pitched from 2003 to 2014 for four teams, notably for Seattle and Arizona. I had Eric. Two- Go right. ahead. Uh, Our guy, JJ Putz. Correct. JJ Putz. Nice, nice get there. Very good. All right. We have four left. What's the score update here? Oh, Eric's running away with this thing. Yeah. I have none. <laughs> I have none. Yeah. All right. Someone's got to come back here. Hell no. I pitched from 2005 to 2011 for two teams, notably the White Sox, for all but my last year in the league. I was a two-time All-Star in the Chicago White Sox bullpen, known for my weird facial hair and personality. Oh my God, guys, come on. The guy I'm picking up is too old. 2005 to 2011, two-time All-Star, weird facial hair, personality. Go ahead. Bobby Jenks? Correct. Oh, Bobby Jenks. Oh. That felt, uh, it felt too easy. I feel like he pitched longer than that. No, yeah, he pitched too. only 2005, according to his baseball reference page. Yeah, no, that's right. Which is why it's wild his career was that short. All right, hmm. next guy. I pitched from 2004 to 2014 for five teams, but known for half of my career with the Padres, where I had three straight Eric. seasons of... Go ahead. Heath Bell. Correct. Damn. Oh my God. Who's the real relief recon guy here? No Good shit. Hey, bring me in, baby. He's Let's overly go. caffeinated. Let's go. <laughs> I finally beat my Carter in the game. Oh, we got two. We got two left here. I pitched from 1995 to 2010 for five teams, notably the Houston Astros, the Mets. And... Art. Go ahead. Billy Wagner. Go ahead, Art. On the board. There you go. Yes. Yeah. Nice. nice one, Art. Nice work. <laughs> All right, our last guy. This one might be the toughest. I almost feel like it should be worth the entire game if you cor- if you get this correctly. <laughs> Just throw Eric out of the play. Eric, do you want to bet that if whoever gets this wins? No, the game? no. I'm not <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll make it fun. Mental sense. All right. I pitched from 2001 to 2012 for six teams, but spent more than half of my career in Colorado. I had seven seasons. All right. One. Go ahead. Houston Street. Incorrect. I will never, oh. ever, ever put him on this show. <laughs> <laughs> I had seven seasons with 20 or more saves, four seasons with 30 or more saves, and one season with nearly 50 saves in 2009 with the Angels. I have a Maybe. very... Oh, go ahead. Was that Brian Fuentes? Boom! Hey! Nice oh. one, Nate. Hey. That nice. Good. That was a good... I didn't remember him having that one season with almost 50, but that that... I yeah, do. it was pretty. That weird delivery. Now I was going to say sidearm pitching delivery was what I was going to throw in there as the yeah. last clue. Well, yeah, unfortunately, uh, Eric won that one. Aeon got that one too. Nice job. <laughs> Don't say unfortunately, David. Come on. Come on. <laughs> but Eric is our winner for the game of this week. So congratulations on that. But Appreciate on that it, note, yeah. I want to make sure we sign off here and get you guys out of here. Thanks all of you guys to come in on. I want to go to each one of you real quick just to let us know where they can find you, anything you're working on or anything you want the people to know as we sign off. Let's start with you, Nate. Yeah, so um, obviously, as you mentioned, the uh, Reliever Recon Patreon link is is down in the tab there. We'd, we'd love to have any subs there. Of course, any feedback you might have for us. Um, you find me at Nate Markham right there on Twitter. I, my, and then also you'll find my written work over at Razzball. I'm starting my uh, my weekly head-to-head columns uh, here just as soon as the season starts, which is not but, what, 10 days away? Is that right? Thank goodness. Mm-hmm. I know. Thank goodness. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Aaron? Uh, Aaron Pags at Fancy Triage on Twitter, um, writing for and editing for at uh, Metsmerized, the Mets blog site, which has been really fun. Finally, following my awesome. my, my favorite team, which is cool. Um, and of course, um, you know, reliever recon. I've volunteered to be the points guy, so I'm going to be the points guy all season. I've got some pretty interesting stuff coming out on should you start a two star pitcher or one star pitcher or a relief pitcher, depending on the format. So I got that coming out real soon. That's, That's fantastic. fantastic. Mm-hmm. What about you, uh, uh, Greg? Let everybody know. Oh, I don't do much. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, obviously, I work with the guys at uh, Recon. I, I, Jesus, I feel like I do at least one article a day. Uh, as what Sunday I did three. Um, but anyways, so uh, always pumping out content there, and then my uh, weekly column on the Athletic will start when the regular season hits. Uh, we just did a, a column broke today with you know. 
uh, guys for saves down the road. Some uh, some guys that might be off the off the radar that could find their way into save situations. And, and that's a weekly thing on the athletic. And, uh, you know, again, thanks for having me. on. It was great to get to know you guys. I know I did like a or like a blind draft with, with Mendy not too long ago. That was the first time I ever got to meet him. But um, it's been really cool being on here. And uh, I appreciate you having me in and and the support and the kind words for recon is all 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 greatly appreciated. Hey, of course, it, it was great having you. Uh, this again being the first time for you and for Nate. And I hope that we didn't scare you off for having you guys back a second time at some point during the season because uh, love talking relievers. This is actually probably our favorite uh, position preview I think we've done just because it was a nice change up and a great group of guys. And uh, including that group of guys, of course, is our old friend Mike Carter. I got to let you <laughs> plug all your great stuff as well. Well, I'm uh, covering bullpens this year for fan tracks, so uh, that's a big thing for me. I'm, I'm really happy to be able to do that. It feels like a, a really good fit for me. Um, thanks to Eric Cross and Doug Anderson for allowing me to do that. And then I'll also be doing some work at SP Streamer this uh, this spring again as well, um, doing some Sunday pieces there. And then I also write more narrative pieces for Nine Any Know It All, a Pacific Northwest. Uh, site that I work with too so enough to keep me busy with a couple of jobs as well so you guys all work extremely hard great follows and just great overall people in the fantasy baseball space so if you're not following them or you're not checking out reliever recon or Mike's articles of fan tracks not ending at all SP streamer you guys gotta check out all their work and all these great places everybody that tunes into triple play fantasy thank you so much for checking out another episode remember you can watch us on YouTube or you can listen to the podcasts, both forms, however you support us are greatly appreciated. Next week, we'll be covering our spring training standouts and our MySpace top eight players going into the season. So it should be a fun show. But until then, everyone stay safe out there. Happy drafting. And we're going to make like a bread truck and we're going to haul these buns. Catch you guys in the next one.